Scribble notes, uh, scribble notes when I wrote these quotes If I offend, pardon me, there's more of me to grow Creative in my process, enjoy the show The will is different when you recognize the different strokes Different folks, same goals, we all want the most So when we reach the top, we can enjoy the toast The type of bread we get is fresh about the bakery Told them don't play with me, with or without a degree Don't question my intensity, bravery Similar to agencies that want to see you fall So just pray for me, and pray for me Einstein with my energy Welcome to the Scribble Notes podcast. Welcome back. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I'm happy to be here. You know, I'm glad to be back. I see. I see you've been doing tremendous things since you have started this. So um, I'm a part. I'm happy to be a part of the journey again. You know what I'm saying? Nah, definitely. Thank you. How you been? Yeah, what you been up to? Um, actually, I've been up to a few things. So we started um moving our studio. And so right now we're in a different location. We've been doing that for like the past, like, I don't know, three to four months. It's, it's been like a process of, of doing that. Um, I've been doing shows. Like I did a couple of shows in Providence, New Hampshire. Uh, as of recently, I got a couple more coming up um, in Waterbury, Connecticut and in a vendor palooza, I believe it's in New Britain, Connecticut. So I've been cooling, um, putting music together, just trying to get life back on track with the, the studio situation because, you know, it leaves you a little unsettled. Dang, you've been busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, you've been busy. You listen off like six things. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to keep up and, and, and do good, do good things, but I, I, I've been moving around and haven't been settled for me, which is where I'm trying to find a place so I can get back to like making music and doing what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? So, mm. so what you, you been? I've been I've been good. Yeah, I've been good. I've been doing a little bit of everything. Finally got this short story coming out at the end of end of this year. I got published in, in an anthology, uh, Summer Bludgeon by Unsettling yeah. Reads, which was pretty dope. It was my first like. It was actually my first attempt at writing something that wasn't fantasy. Uh, so oh. it was pretty cool, like, just to get a prompt, write, and then see how how they respond. And I got selected, yeah. and there's a lot of people who didn't, so I was surprised. But yeah. it, was, <laughs> it was dope. That's dope. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. It, made me, it honestly made me feel like a real author because I was like, wow, they actually are picking this up and paying me for it. So yeah. that was really cool. Um, but besides you that, are, I'm working are, on a, are a real author. What do you mean yeah. feel like one? You are one. <laughs> working on my working on publishing this third book coming out later this year, probably in the fall. And honestly, the only thing I'm really working on right now is this this new this new book I'm writing. Um mm. I'm writing a brand new story. So I've been outlining and building this whole thing up. Okay. And I plan on trying to sell this one to a publisher. So it's been okay. it's been super interesting. Like is it connected to to the um your other your other series or it's totally different? It's totally different. It's a it's a whole different foundation. Everything okay. is everything's built from the ground up. It plays okay. off the idea of um the the basic premise of youth is wasted on the young, and I okay. build that into the the magic system of the story and the pol the political structure and how everything else is is created. But okay. it's been it's been super fun. I'm not gonna lie. Like that's been the thing I've been working on the most outside of the regular work day that I've been putting in. And then obviously the podcast, just getting episodes up and staying consistent. Right. But it's been right. cool. It's yeah. been cool. Just trying to stay busy. Yeah. You've been like, busy. You've been busy, <laughs> man. You've been busy. It's it's crazy because I think the last time I talked to you, there was there's been so much that's ha that's happened since the last time I spoke to you. Uh, especially on the podcast, like mm -hmm. just guests and just meeting crazy, just crazy people, just crazy different people, people in different spots and positions and kind of seeing how far you can really take things like, yeah, this thing has and, kind and you've of been doing a great job at it. I've been I've been watching from a distance, but nonetheless, I've been I've been watching and, and everything that you're doing seems to be going in the right direction towards towards your, your goal. So um Kudos to you, man. That that that's not easy to do, especially like tackling something and being consistent at something and, and consistently finding new ways to to um energize your audience and, and things of that nature. So 
Yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. Yeah, but let's talk about you. Let's talk about you because I've I've been following you doing a whole bunch of stuff. How has it How has it been this last I say four four months um, since twenty twenty two has started? How's thing How have things been? Oh, it's been it's been cool. I haven't like I said I haven't really got to where where I wanted to be. So like. For example, I put out three songs this year so far, and, mm. and my track record is, is I'm supposed to have a lot more, but because the studio is kind of down, I'm limited with certain things that I can do. But um, that's really what I've been focusing on. I've been working on an album, so that's like that's like my main focus mm. on top of like just putting music out. Um, I have a project that I really feel comfortable. It's been two years since I put an actual body of work out, so um the type of music that I'm making is is a lot it's a lot lighter it's a lot um it's it feels it feels better because it's coming from a different place so that's really Mm -hmm. been my main focus outside of like running the business um of the studio also my clothing and trying to trying to just find new ways to energize that and um being able to represent that because that's a company in itself workaholics and that shit is not easy um (laughs) Not it's a all. consistent, it's a consistent, consistent, consistent grind. And, and, um, you know, sometimes you feel like you don't have enough time in the day to do it on top of whatever else you have to do. So I've been working on finding balance and, and putting things in the order they need to be in. But for the most part, I've been, I've been building up, uh, mm-hmm. for these next couple months. So, um, I say in about like two, three weeks, I should have more music, more content, more visuals, Things of that nature, because I'm I'm done I'm done doing shows after the 18th. I think I might have one or two after that, but after that, like my my premier focus is to just build content, find ways to be consistent while I work on the music that I want to make and make sure I put it out properly and, and release it uh, through the right channels. Yeah, is it yo? It sounds like a grind. Like you're just putting in work, and honestly. I feel the same way that things don't always happen on the timeline you have in mind. Like, Dude. That is, <laughs> it is, it hit me hard this year. Like I had this whole, I had this whole expectation of what it was going to be and things have changed or shifted a little bit. Um, yeah. Not that things are getting done, but things that I wanted to get done have taken a little longer and right. you know how life goes. You just have right. to roll and figure it out and stay consistent yeah. in the area that you can be. I- I think I think life is more so about just figuring out how to roll with the punches anyways. If you could do that, then then the things you actually like have, you know, like a a love for, it'll they'll happen. Just just be okay with them not happening on the time you thought, you know. And for me, that's kind of been like my whole life, but specifically this time period is being patient. So I understand what it is as as you understand what it is, and and you know, you just gotta gotta you sit still for a little bit. Like how long are you okay with sitting still for until you have to make a move? You know Mm. what I'm saying? To you, okay, like you've sat still long enough. These are the options that are presented to you. You have to pursue them now. So what do you have to do to to get to what you need? So um, that's where I'm at right now. Like it's it's time, it's go time now. Like I've been patient for the past like six months um, with being consistent, like don't get me wrong, wrong like I've been consistent but to what I believe it's not even close so mm-hmm. um yeah I'm excited man I'm I'm, a, I'm excited to like move forward into the summer and just just start doing like creative things man you know what I'm saying so I'm happy I'm happy I'm happy yeah I wanted to ask you about your um your clothing uh more of a technical question but I'm over here trying to make a clothing, launch some clothing myself and sell some merch. Um, how has that been? What's that process like for you? Because I know last time we were speaking, you hadn't had it set up yet. And now obviously it's launched. Now. Yeah, so, 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 so since we spoke, I set it up. Um, I did a commercial for uh, like the launch that was in uh, January. I think I did it. It was January. So that was cool. Um, I set it up through uh, Shopify and, and mm-hmm. things of that nature. Um, it is it is its own grind in itself. So outside of you know me figuring out the music thing, you also have to find time to like set like the same amount of you know marketing ideas and plans you have. 
they might be completely different than your actual like clothing. Like they might be two total mm. polar opposites mm. on what you have to do. And so that kind of is like a nice divide and you got to like figure out a way to be creative. And then, you know, you let people in on that certain part of your life and your art um, within clothing, finding the right channels, finding the right people who can give you the best prices like not getting robbed, having quantity. It's like, man, it's, it's so much. <laughs> running a TikTok page, running an Instagram page, a Twitter page. Like you have to be completely immersed in it. And if mm -hmm. you do not have time, you have to find ways to com compartmentalize the time. So at least you get some of the stuff done. So that's been my thing is like, I've been so focused on like this over here that after I did the launch in like the first two, three months, I kind of had to take a step back and start working towards something else. But now it's, I'm finding like a way to be able to do both now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, it's dope. It's, it's just being creative and, and using your brain to, to exercise it, you know? So that's, I like it. I like it. Yeah. I was going to say, I like the output of it. It's, it's like crazy because. Uh, it's such a different, because I've been looking into it and trying to dabble. I'm like, this is such a different space, trying to build your own merch store and yeah. managing all that. It's like, it's yeah. in, it's not even, <laughs> it's not the same. Even no. getting graphics and like actually building out what do you want? What do you want those color schemes to be? What do you want the color offerings to be? Yeah. It's like, it takes so much thought. Yeah. I, and I, and I'm, I'm learning that you, you do have to follow, um, certain trends right you got to follow certain trends that work within whatever the type of clothing you're trying to do but similar to like whatever um you know whatever whatever you're doing as like outside of it so you you know you write books and, and uh, you're an author excuse me you're an author and uh you do podcasts so those two elements require a certain amount of attention to detail and it's the same thing but it's like you do it from a perspective of what you love to do. So hmm. clothing is no different. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I started the clothing because I just wanted to wear hats. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to put my own stuff on similar to what you have. Like you can walk out and be a walking advertisement for what you, what you do. And people will catch on as long as you have like the right business plan, the right motto, um, the slogan that makes people attached to your brand. Like you know, it's, 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 it's a lot, but it, it's a lot, it takes a lot more thinking than actual doing, you know what I'm mm. saying? Cause you want to make sure when you're thinking about what you're doing, you're never going to know the right steps, but you're going to know what's right for you at that time. And it's okay if it isn't the best choice, because that's how you learn, especially when no one's telling you, you know what I'm saying? Like no one's showing you how to do it. Um, and that's another thing that I think um, we have to do more is just build um like on ideas on how to run certain businesses and mm -hmm. I, and I and i literally just thought about that but that's been something that i've wanted to do for a long time is like have meetings with people with different brands and businesses and you just sit down and you just break bread about ideas that can work as a collective for you guys um or for for you or for that person and you just build together you build across mm -hmm. versus trying to maybe reach up or reach down and Pull people up you're building with people who have the same type of expertise and knowledge so when we get off of that i'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a definitely i'm gonna definitely hit you with that because that's something that i that that has to be done now especially with gas prices about to jump oh seven dollars <laughs> seven dollars <laughs> a gallon you know what i'm saying like we gotta find a way to to build the, our our way you know so nah for sure and honestly it's been crazy because I've been thinking about merch and thinking about doing this for so long. And because I just haven't taken the step to do it, I've been just so interested in seeing other people. And I'm noticing even more now, obviously, the moment you put your eye on something, you just start to notice everyone that's doing it. Right, like, right. You're like, dang, all right. I can see how, I can see what he's doing. I can see sort of what that process looks like, but seeing some of those insider, those insider right. trader information is like, right, what right. it really is all about. Right. And we're all trying to figure it out, too. Like, so, you know, nobody truthfully has it figured out. And if they act like they do, they're lying to you mm. to put up a facade. So I think I think when you when you understand that we all can help each other, like not you specifically, but like you in general, like we can we can be bigger and we can grow our brands together. So uh, I think that's something that has to happen more often, mm. too. But you're you i've seen your merchandise i've seen you putting it together 
I've seen your, your podcast when you do your quotes. Um, everything that you're doing is on brand of exactly how, how to market things to people because that's like subliminal marketing. Like you might not even pay attention to it the first two, three, four, five times, but the more you see, okay, he's wearing a hat, he's wearing a hoodie, he's wearing a shirt, the backdrop, the, the logo, like everything starts to form to the point where people are going to inquire about it. You know, it's just building long uh, longevity with your your customers and your clients and your fan base, you know what I'm saying? But um, you're on the right path from what I can see. Mm. But I, you know what I'm saying? I'm still figuring <laughs> it out, but like, just as long as people know that's exactly who you are and what you represent, you're good. You're yeah, good. it's been interesting because I've been, I've been lucky enough to reach out to a lot of other podcasters and get to be in that podcast space more interviewing people, seeing how they kind of do uh, this same thing. And it's cool to see what, what works for them, what works really well and what I like, and then see the things that I guess I'm doing well that they think is pretty cool because everyone has their own way of moving and go going through the space, I guess. But at the same time, there are some things that are like, yo, that's dope. I need to find a way to kind of incorporate and create that my way and put that out too, especially if it, if it works well with the brand. So it's been right. interesting as I've been kind of tapping into what other people are up to. And on top of that, especially with writing, I've, I found that be, I found that to be even more so with writing, like being able yeah. to learn and see what other writers are doing, see kind of how they're promoting their stories and their books, who, whose stuff is really sticking and whose isn't. And then understanding why that is the case and seeing how you can kind of kind of move with that. It's like, it's interesting. I was right. thinking about you the other day because there, I've been seeing all these, uh, I've been seeing so many like musicians on TikTok. And for a long time, I was like, wait, are musicians really on TikTok? Like, is this like the thing? Yeah. And it seems like there's a lot of people on TikTok. I was like, yo, that's interesting to me because I would have never... I don't know. I knew people were dancing on TikTok. I didn't know it was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was. I didn't know it was coming to this. I didn't know it was but really people, like. That's, that's the thing. That's the thing about it, though, is that people are going to TikTok in these certain outlets because they create um, a certain type of funnel of people that can, you know, come to your page through it because everybody's looking for it. It's it's, you know, it's the newer way of doing things, which is cool. Um, I'm always like on the fence because I feel like as, a, as an artist or a musician, I feel like all those challenges, are you talking about like the challenges that you see where people are like rapping to like- Literally, somebody? yo, I, I've seen thousands of challenges. Like, I've yeah, seen, man. I've been seeing the same dude do the same song. <laughs> <laughs> Every TikTok, different background, different place. You be in the car one day, at the yeah. pool the next day, all the same song. I'm like, bro. <laughs> and, and you know what's crazy? It works. It works. It works. And and that's the that's the weird part about it to me because it works. But where it doesn't work is when you have to go somewhere and sell something, and then it mm -hmm. don't it don't trend it don't uh, transition. Like all these people are just essentially on their phones and. They don't come to see you, or maybe they do if it's a big enough viral trend, but like there's mm. millions of people, millions of artists, millions of different types of people on TikTok. So you gotta think about like, okay, you can be one in a million, right? But also at the same time, it's like, how many of those people are gonna actually pay for something that you're promoting? Or how many of those people, like it's not gonna convert into things that can actually help you. I feel, unless you're in like that top percent, um, and I always feel like the originators, so the people who are the starters, like the people who, who are the ones that are creating the challenges and have all these millions of people doing it are the ones that are reaping the benefits of, yeah. of doing it. But you doing it as like just the do, doing it to pick up clout, like you're only giving them more. And on top of that, TikTok is making money off of you. It's like, it's so crazy to me, but that is the way the world it seems to be going. Um, I still feel like the people like being in person, especially with the world being open now, mm. expensive, but open. Um, I still feel like that's like, the main the main way to do it man because mm -hmm. you build relationships with people you know like truthful ones ones that that you know 
people will come out and support every single time they see you. That's more so what you want. Not like fly by night, like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, I get it though. Like, teach I get his it. Own life. <laughs> I see I see it so often now, especially because I've been trying to I've been trying to like hone my my social media presence and make it more interesting or try to I, I guess reinvigorate what I'm doing for my own interest because yeah. I'm like trying to build. So I've been seeing a lot of musicians and I'm like, this is so this is so interesting. Like yeah. I saw this one dude, I forget his name, but he he basically was like having he was playing all his songs and he would have like an interesting like flow in the beginning of the song that's like that's not actually the flow he uses for the actual song he would do these old school flows with his with his song and then he would actually play the real like mix of what his song sounds like See, that's creative. it was it was dope it was creative and the first few times i'll say i was really interested uh I can hold you. For the first, for the first, like a few of them, I was like, "Yo, this is dope." And right. for like a week, two weeks, but like you said, I don't have any connection to them. So after a couple of weeks of seeing it and whatever, I stopped watching because I was like, oh, "I got tired, just... tired of it." Right? Yeah, and and all I know him by is the is the thing. So it's like right. I might not be as interested in staying long term as a fan or whatever. Right. But I definitely know, and I've seen like, even his streams and stuff like that have gone up. But it's yeah. because some of those videos have gone kind of viral. Yeah. But I don't know what that I don't know what that looks like or translates for him at the end of the day. And I've seen some other artists and I'm like, I don't know what the I don't know what the full outcome of that's going to be long term. Like I think I think it's all streams, man. I think people do everything for streams. Mm-hmm. And like you can fudge screen, you can fudge numbers. So it's like at the end of the day, like you do all this stuff and go, and go viral. You can lie about the, the numbers that you get based off of something like it. it you do a TikTok, it might not go crazy, but you could be like, "Well, you know, because I did the TikTok, I got added to seven playlists yesterday." Whoop de whoop. Mm. Cool. And in that same sentence, you can be like, "Yo, I paid a service that submitted my music to seven different playlists." <laughs> Like, <laughs> like it's, there's no, there's no difference. There's no difference. So it's like, mm-hmm. pick it, pick your poison at the end of the day. Like people are doing that to, to inflate whatever, you know, whatever their goal is like. And at the end of the day, Spotify don't pay you shit anyways. They pay you like a half of a half of a penny or like mm-hmm. a, a tenth of a penny for every stream. It's like a thousand streams is one album sales. So when you start to think about that, it's like, oh, like, okay, like, this is the game we're playing. You know what I'm saying? A hundred, like, don't be fooled by that. Oh my God, he went viral. Did he book mm. a show? Like, did, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Did, did he sell out a show? Because that's <laughs> impressive to me, at least. And that's nah, why, I, I that's why I'm like, that. uh, yeah, because because people do go viral. People go viral for a lot of things, right. and right. I don't know necessarily what viral means. And even right. even TikTok, I have a friend that's really big on TikTok, and I've been like. What does it actually do? Like what in reality, what's tangible about that viral or whatever? Right. Because sometimes it's it's really cool to see that, but it's also like, what do you actually get from it? Right. And and she's been lucky. She's gotten like free hotel stays and all we'll types of that. stuff. That's, that's and food and restaurants and all this other stuff. And I'm like, that is why your right. thing is so cool because all these places want you to make TikToks about them. Right. But besides that. It's like, yeah, would that be as in, would it would that matter if you got a million streams and no one wanted no, you to make no, the thing? It wouldn't. But it, that's the thing. So, like to the point of your friend, she's dope because she's getting something out of it that she probably couldn't have gotten if she didn't do it. Hmm. That is why you do things. Like that's why you make music. That's why you do art. That's why you you know write books. That's why you, because you're doing something that you're gonna get a return that you wouldn't have gotten if you didn't. So now. You put that in the same like equation. I can jump on TikTok and go viral, but guess what? What am I getting out of it? Nothing. Nothing. I might feel good. It might be like an, an internal feeling that makes me feel great. But like at the end of the day, like you're you're doing the most for no like monetary gain or no political gain, no social gain, no cultural gain. It's just for your own personal clout. And to me, that is majority of the people who use mm-hmm. social media. Like they use it for personal clout instead of using it to help 
benefit their agenda. You know what I'm saying? And I can respect somebody who does that with the purpose of getting that out of it. But doing TikTok challenges and, and rapping to other people's challenges and dancing, yeah. like, yeah, you know I mean, like, go go out and pump, right? <laughs> you know the dance move. I get it. I get it. I get it. And this is the thing too. Like, I get it if you're a certain age. Like, I get it if you're younger. Like, this is this is your fun. For people who are older, I feel like there's a little bit more pressure. So, like, you have to kind of perform different. You can still have fun, but like the performance out of it got to be monetary. I don't think a 16 year old kid or a 15 year old kid is on TikTok and doing the 18 year old, they're doing it just for the look. I don't think that's a problem, but I think we get older and 30, 40 doing it just for the looks and the streams that don't equate to nothing. Then we got to, we got to reevaluate what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And, and I think that part of it is understanding like what is your brand and what are you building? on that and why does your brand even matter right like what is it all about um i've been definitely coming to terms with that idea like i i post content about my podcast about the books and almost everything i post rotates around those two things because that is the brand that is what i'm doing and that's where people can go to get updates that's what people can see for updates and i think that's what people are looking for like if i'm going to put you on my page if you're going to hit this page and you're going to see it you're going to see like okay this is what's going on you're not necessarily going to see anything else you're not going to see me doing dance challenges because imagine right like imagine you see me out here my instagram reel got me dancing you'd be like what does that have to do with anything trying to sell a book or get somebody to read a book or or listen to the podcast (laughs) it would be so out of place like that's not what i talk about that's not what i do but some people do that because, right, you put the right song behind it or the right reel behind it. That's the one's going, that's trending in the right direction. Right. And I've even considered it like, oh, this one's, this one's whatever. Now I'm thinking, do I do this just because it's what other people are doing? Right. Um, and I've seen, and I've tried stuff like that. No return. No right. one buying the book. No one's clicking right. the link. No one's right. actually going to convert on some of that stuff. Right. So it's like, why not stay true to the people who are actually following, listening, uh, who are tuned in to when the next book comes out and all this other stuff. We'll be excited. Pick up a copy, pick up an ebook. Um, I had uh, I had shared something about the, the, st- the short story and the release of the anthology. And I had a ton of people actually go download it right away That's or go dope. pre-order it right away. That's dope. And That's I was like, it's a five dollar. Pre- it's a five dollar pre-order. I make next to nothing off the book. Like it's be, already already got a little bit of a royalty up front and I get a small royalty because there's 30 of us in this publication. Right. But I was like, this is cool because I was able to share it. People were able to see it. Right. And because most of my stuff is just true to me, people are able to connect with it and then pick up a copy. And obviously when the book comes out, I'm going to post it again, see if people want to buy it, who wants to pick it up. And it just being able to have a network that supports you, not just some random random people who are just here for the stream they're not here for the item or here for the business they don't care about what you're doing and that's what happens and you can essentially draw people in but it depends on you know how how authentic it is to what your brand is so Mm -hmm. i i i don't know i i think that i think that being true to what you believe in is probably the most important thing it's not the easiest route it's not the easiest route it's always easier to do something else, but like being true to what you believe in is going to help you a lot more down the line. Even if you don't become the big famous or whatever you have, mm-hmm. in your, like you'll have a more sense of self. You won't be lost in the world like a lot of people are because they're trying to chase something that ain't attainable without knowing who they are first. So, um, you know, you get it. You get it. You understand. You're on the right path. Yeah, so. it, take, it takes time. It takes effort. And I think also it just takes recognizing who you are like in in these spaces you can lose yourself trying to trying to chase clout because you could sit there all day trying to make the next viral video like people do that people sit there all day like and they obsess over it they want that so badly that they start to really do things that they shouldn't Mm -hmm. just for the hope that people will see it just for the hope that those people will then acknowledge them more Mm-hmm. And nine times out of ten, when you go viral, it's like by accident. Like, oh shit, this I wasn't even trying to. You're not thinking about it because you're so like tapped into your element that you don't care about 
going viral. So, you know, it's a, it's a drug for some people, but you can use it, you know, just like people who do drugs, you can use it to help enhance something or you can use it and just be a junkie. Like it's your choice, mm. you know what I'm saying? But you gotta know how to engage and, and what you give into it is what you're gonna get out of it. So I, I agree, I agree. Yeah, social media is crazy. Like that's yeah. all I'm gonna say to that. Social media is wild. And it's an interesting place, but I've been seeing these, I've been seeing people rapping on TikTok a lot. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, this is getting absurd. I, I, I'll do it. I'll do it. And I've, I've done a few TikToks like that because I'm, I'm trying to work on like freestyling or something. Mm. And that's cool because that's fun to me. So that's the only reason why I would be on there doing that. But to do it, to go viral off of something else or, yo, tag me to be in the Fam, yes, tag, tag, my, tag my actual music, right? Tag my actual music, listen to my actual music and, and run that up. Like I ain't running his up because I want to be like him. You know what I'm saying? Like tag, uh, so it, it just depends where your priorities lie too. Like it's, that's that's kind of where- You know what's you crazy? Know, what there, just just you saying that, I remember there was a dude who I thought I, I, liked his, I liked his freestyle on this open verse or whatever. Clicked on his page, clicked on the link to Spotify hasn't public hasn't hasn't put out any music since 2019 i was like dog you got me on your thing like i'm a i'm a listener now like i'm about to link right here like everything you did worked for the conversion and you don't got anything and why like, and why would you crazy if you get like a hundred thousand views from tiktok and that's how people address you as yeah you're a tiktok rapper like, what <laughs> I was like, yo, that was what? crazy. I was like, you haven't made any music, but you got this whole thing. You just converted, but it didn't that's work. That's free. It's not, you got well, not free technically, but it's a lot easier to do this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. Than to like go to a studio and like write your own stuff, and now you got to put it together. It's different, yeah. bro. It feels different. Yeah, it just it's not the same. Is it is a different different world, different output at the end. Um, so what's up next? Yeah, what's what do you got coming up next? Um, I have in these next three months. Um, what we have? Uh, June, July, August, September. I'll count September. I am working on creating the album of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. That's that's like my main focus. Um, I have a like I said, I have a couple shows coming up, but I really want to put more videos out, um, working on something for July and August, like a, like a three day weekend of just, um, events, like, you know, thinking of things that are fun, like a kickball tournament, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like things that would bring people out to come and support like community event and then have also have a show and, and incorporate something big like that. So that's something that like is in the, in the process for August. Um, and outside of that, man, I'm just I'm just doing the best I can to stay relevant on online, by, but being true to like what I am. So um, I, I just try to find new ways to do content. I also do a vlog that I'm consistently building. That mm. is pretty much like the the sessions that I've been having with everybody, um, all the artists and things of that nature, leading up into the release of my project. So every week or every other week, depending on what I end up doing. Um, on Monday at seven o'clock, I do like a vlog. It releases on my YouTube page and it's, it grows. I'm looking for people to sponsor it. I'm looking for people to be intrigued enough to want to be a part of it. Um, film, it's like a very interactive, raw, like kind of process, but I want to invite people into it because I feel like people give you, you know, people might give you their sessions or like, you know, the, the glory of what they do, but I don't think a lot of people really give you like, the, the frustrations, the, mm. the thought process, the, you know, and if they do, it's in short form. It's like one documentary. It's not like consistently leading up into something releases. So that's more so what my biggest thing is as of now to stay consistent with content is that, um, and just making new music, man, just being creative and just like enjoying life, like um, enjoying it. Um, I gotta, I gotta rework my my workaholics website mm. and get new merchandise up there. Take some merchandise down, new ideas, things of that nature. Like I gotta play around with it. Um, and yeah, man, that's that's kind of been my thing. It's just, it's just, I'm in like a, a 
I'm in a good spot. I'm not rebuilding, but it feels like I am. And it's, and it's good. It's not like, oh, I gotta do this all. It feels <laughs> like new, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, so, you're fresh. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for, for the stuff I have coming up um, and the music that I'm about to drop and, and just the content that I'm about to create. And, and it's, it's all gonna be dope, like all dope, all love, just positive, very light music, like, you know, feel good stuff. So mm. I'm excited for the people to hear it. All right, so I wanted to talk about your your new songs that came out recently. Um, where did the inspiration for these come from? I got Legacy popping every single day in the car. Molly Harper <laughs> listening <laughs> at ten months old. She getting that. She getting it in, man. She getting it in. Let, <laughs> letting the legacy be known. Um, that that's that song. Honestly, that was something. That was like the first. Uh, I want to say that was like the return of 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 the new music that I was mm -hmm. going to be like creating and captivating. So the inspiration really just came when uh, Josh, who produced it, he just sent me the beat, and I was like, man, I gotta just rap to it, and I just gotta talk about, you know, like, you know, just just legacy type things, you know, things that things that make sense to me. It mm -hmm. wasn't really much of a purpose, and I was gonna save it to put on like a project, but I was like, you know what, like. I know I can create more of these and I need to just get music out. And I think it's a dope, I think the beat is dope. I think like even the sample at the end is dope that we, that that he came up with. I, I can't even take any credit for that. Cause I didn't, at first when I heard it, I was like, what the heck is this? But then it just fit, you know what I'm saying? It just fit with the way the song was. And um, man, it just, it just made me, it just, I was excited to be able to rap like mm -hmm. free without any restrictions, without having to think about lines without having to, to try to create it for a specific genre of people like I'm in a space now where I can literally just rap however I want and before mm -hmm. you know you try to please people but then I realized like I'm never going to actually please people or get the respect that I think I deserve with the music that I make so in doing that let me just make whatever the hell I want. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the people, if you like it, you like it. If you don't press skip and then, you know, there'll be other songs that maybe you could rock with, you know what I'm saying? And that's, that was like the first song where I was like, okay, I'm not trying to create for a, a box. I'm just going to rap, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And my project is, is similar to that. It's not going to be box. It's not going to be like structured to what people would think it is. It's just going to be it and mm -hmm. whatever draw from it is is going to be how inspirational it can feel or it might not feel mm. but um yeah it's it, it was dope it was dope to be able to do that yeah that one um back to work mm -hmm. i remember definitely hearing back to work you came in hard on that one that yeah. that went that went sick mm -hmm. that that's that's that was more so for the commercial so like mm. i that record that makes and, sense <laughs> yeah like that that commercial um, it was more so for a commercial but it's also for um i want people to use it for their own um their own commercials or i want people to use it for their own motivational journeys or things that they have to do like it was just something to get to the people to kind of motivate them and just talk about like the things that you know that that we all feel like we got to get back to work back to work get mm. back on my you know what i'm saying you want to you want to go back into whatever you're doing and attack it at full strength so when i did that i was like it, it only goes hand in hand with the commercial but i think that um it was just something that i wanted people to mob out to and on top of that my cousin she's a ufc fighter her name is tracy baldwin and she was supposed to she had a fight at uh mohegan sun Mm. in January it was for I don't remember the company but it was a pretty big fight um but she ended up catching COVID so she didn't fight and the music was supposed to play that night like as her walkout music in Mohegan so I also made it tailored for her you know what I'm saying to walk out to it for her fight so it was just That's one good. of those things that it was made with more of a purpose than legacy was you know nah that's dope that it, it was it's a really cool song like I've been bumping that myself, so I'll yeah. say that. Especially at the gym, working out. Yeah, that's just like get back hard. to it. Like that's all. That's all. Just makes you want to just work out and, and and get back into your element of of what you you know what I'm saying of what you believe you should be. So that's kind of where I wanted to be, and I wanted to put that out. 
Um, just because, like, it might, you know what I'm saying? It, it might not get played outside of the gym, and that's cool with me. Like, that's mm. that's the whole purpose of it anyway. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and for anyone listening, too, Trey is the intro song to the pod. Hey! <laughs> so, Trey, Trey made the intro song. Thank you to Trey for that. Yeah. That has definitely been helping. Uh, I don't, you don't even know how many people have listened to this intro song. So I definitely, Shit, well, definitely want to say that for sure. I appreciate it. Um, I definitely appreciate it. When I, when I, uh, when I get this thing set up again, I'm gonna see if I can create something, something a little newer and just send it as, as like an intro. Cause I, um, that's dope, but I know, I know I'm capable of, of, of more, especially in this newer space, this new mm-hmm. idea just seeping through the walls it's like, ah, like it's, it's all it's all dope you know what i'm saying so yeah no i appreciate it for using it like for real nah, of course it was dope um so obviously you got big plans for more music um you actually have a third song the uh the love like love, mine yeah yeah so so that so a love like mine was i don't i think it was released on the 11th so it was for valentine's day Mm. Um, with Rico and Ward is on the second verse and Rico's on the hook. Um, I think that song is really dope. I think it's I think it's highly like underrated. I think it's it's a good like bop you just want to ride to. And um it's summer music, you know what I'm saying? So mm. I think it's just it can be played in all spaces of, of um all spaces of, of music. It could be played at a cookout, it could be played at a party, it could be played wherever you want it to be played. And the cool thing about that is that <clears throat> we didn't really, we didn't really like intend for it to be like the way it sounded. It just came out that way. You know what I'm saying? Like there was no pressure to make it sound like I rapped my verse, Rico did the, I sent it to Rico, he did his, um, he did the hook. And then Ward did the, the second verse, and that was it. Like it was just effortless. And um, Dante East Lane, Dante and Josh uh, Blunt, excuse me, um, produced it. So that was like a win-win. You know what I'm saying? So I, everything has started to feel effortless. Like I don't, mm. I don't have to force nothing no more. Like before, I had to force to put things together. If it don't work, I, y'all don't hear it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it don't come out. So. Um, yeah, that, that's and, a pretty and you and, and you and Charles, I remember Charles Tyson, right? Yeah. Y'all were out in Nashville at one point? Yes, we were. Uh, we were in Knoxville, Knoxville. Knoxville, Knoxville. Yes, yes. What was that like? Because I saw y'all performing out there because I was able to have him on the podcast um, at one point. Knox, Knoxville was, was crazy. Um, the, the energy out there was dope. Like when we first got there, so for example... Me and, me and Charles were out there for two days because we got out there a day before. That was the first day, I think, of the tour. So we went to the University of Tennessee, which is huge. The campus is huge. Oh my gosh. It's like a city. It's like a city. Um, so we went there to just essentially look for the radio station to go and tell them like, hey, we have a show at X, Y, and Z, you know, do an announcement or like, who do we need to speak to? Uh, student-wise to get the students there because the venue was like five minutes from the the um, university mm. and it was 21 plus but um so we did whatever we just chilled at the hotel for the mo- for most part of it got some food the next day we went to the show showed up early and as we were um you know as we were on the street waiting to get let in there was a, the owner of the bar I don't remember the name of the bar but I don't even remember the dude's name because it's been so long, but like he was walking down the street. It's like, oh, y- y- y'all, y'all not from here? Like, oh, like he was asking us questions. We talked to him and he was like, you know what, man? Come with me. We'll take some shots. I said, what? Like, like just, <laughs> just like mad hospitable. Like he took us, so he took us into the other bar that was like next to his, next to his spot. And uh, he introduced us to some, to some people who worked at the bar over there who owned the bar. And we were just talking to him about the music. And then he, he went to go work at his job and we went to go do the show and we rocked out and it was dope. Like it was just mad. Like I would have never expected it to be that way in Knoxville because I, I don't know. Mm. Um, I only ever hear about Nashville or Memphis, but Knoxville was dope. And like, like that, that was amazing. I had so much fun out there. It was, nah, it was dope. That seems, it seems so cool because even just from the outside looking in, I was like, yo, they are really out here just chilling because yeah. he's out in Texas. So 
Y'all had to really, he had to fly. You had to, you had to fly, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. He, he flew, he flew out here. He flew to New York. Oh, he, he flew, flew to New York. York. Yeah. And then we drove. So we mm. drove. We didn't fly from each one of those states because that's out of <laughs> <laughs> that would have been way out of our budget. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying. But, I'm saying. but um, yeah, we drove from Knoxville to, um, I think mean, Knoxville to Asheville to, no, Knoxville to Roanoke, Virginia, to Asheville, to Greensboro. And then we came back out here to Massachusetts, Springfield, uh, Providence, New Hampshire, we we're supposed to do Vermont, but it got canceled because it was snow. And the tour was in March, the first week of March. So um, we only didn't do Vermont because of that. But we met some cool people, man. We met some dope artists, uh, built some connections. Because of that, I was able to go back to Providence for a show. And I was able to go back to New Hampshire to do a show. And um, the, the, reception, the reception is amazing, bro. Like, it's, it's just when you do what you love, like people love it. You know what I'm saying? Where do you find all the time for this? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Where do you find all the time? <laughs> <laughs> Something got to give, bro. It's, it's mm. like, it's like this, man. It's, it's like for, for the times that there is that, there's also time where there's nothing going on at all. Mm. And you're kind of forced to just be patient and sit still. But when things are on, like when it's go mode, like, cause it was nine, it was nine cities and 10 days, yeah, nine cities in 10 days. And those cities are like, you know, Tennessee, <laughs> Connecticut, like they're like 12 to 14 hours apart, you know? So, but it, it was cool, man. I, I think you're, you know, if that's what you want, that's the type of stuff you put up with to, to mm -hmm. get it. But then when there's nothing going on, there's literally nothing happening. Like, it's just, I'm at the crib playing video games because I don't have <laughs> anything to do. You know what I'm saying? It comes in, it comes in waves, but when it mm -hmm. hits, it hits. You know, so um, the 18th of June, my show in Waterbury is actually the last show um, of the stretch of four that I did recently, which was Providence, uh, New Hampshire. I'm missing one. Uh, New Haven and mm -hmm. uh, Waterbury. So you know, when it's on, it's on, and when it's not, it's 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 kind of slow. That's where you have the time to build, but. A lot of sacrifices too, so you got to be willing yeah. to make those sacrifices, or, or you're not really going to be able to even travel, want to travel, you know. But you do it with good people, you're good. You know what I'm saying? Charles is family, so like I don't. If I'm traveling with him, it's like traveling with my brother or something. Mm. Like it's not, it's not a big deal. I'm, we're not moving with people we don't like, or like we're just associated because we make music. Nah, like it's real real family, real brotherhood type stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. It's, it's crazy because you do have to make so many sacrifices to be able to pursue any of your passions. Like I was talking to Caitlin the other day just about the amount of time you have to put into the thing you enjoy and how so many, we're like we're wired almost to think, let's put time into things we don't enjoy. Let's, mm -hmm. let's make sacrifices for the things we don't enjoy. Like, People will go to work 40 hours a week, 50, 50 hours a week sometimes, and mm -hmm. a job that they hate, and then they won't they won't pick up the pen to write. They won't yeah. do the thing that they enjoy. They yeah. won't sit down and record. They won't do any of the stuff that they actually like doing, the things that they're passionate about. And it's crazy because we do almost justify spending too much time doing things we don't like, where we look at things we do enjoy, like, ah, if I have to put effort right. in there, like, right. how can I balance both? Confused. How can I you do confuse this? Your, you confuse yourself. Like, you start to confuse yourself because you're forced to, like, let's just say you work 40 hours for a job you don't like. You're forced to be there. Like, you have to be there because you have mm. to pay bills, blah, 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 blah. So by the time you get out of there, you're like, man, I don't want to do nothing else, even if it is enjoyable. You know yes. what I'm saying? Because that requires effort. Like, it requires effort to go to the gym after you work eight hours it requires effort to wake up at five o'clock in the morning and you might love it but like the effort that you're that you're spending on something you love you know it's gonna be like if you're balancing right you know that you're gonna have to spend more time doing what you don't love and that's gonna make you tight because in the time you're doing what you you know you let's just say like 
I like to play video games on my time off. If I'm playing video games on my time off, but I know I got to work another 40 hours tomorrow, I'm going to be mad that I was up so late playing video games because I had to come in here and do this. So it's like yep. you got to pick your you pick your battles. That's why I think I'm a big advocate for people using their sick time if they got mm-hmm. it. Call out. Like, because if they're not going to give you mental health days, use them yourself. Like, you, there's no shame in that. There's no shame in saying I need a break today, mm-hmm. especially if you can afford to take it. But a lot of people are so like, you're so here that, well, I don't want people to think that I'm, I don't, know, I don't care what they think, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm out of here, bro. Like, yeah. I'm go to the beach today, like, because I deserve it. You know, people, you kind of just, like you said, you justify the things that you, you love to do for the things that you don't. And, and yeah. It's tough. I've been, tough. I've been a very big proponent of using vacation time, using sick days, taking bro. the time you need. Because in my in my mind, right, like I enjoy doing what I'm doing. Like I even I enjoy my work. I love my job. But at the same time, I enjoy writing and doing my podcast and doing all this other stuff more. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, that's just how it is. Like when they gave me the option, <laughs> like it wouldn't be a but question sure. for me. Uh, yeah. And that's why I, and that's why I'm like, look, I spend all the time I need to spend at work and I separate <clears throat> I separate the two and I make sure that when I come home, I get to enjoy the thing I want to do. When I'm sitting down outlining my books, it's because I enjoy mm-hmm. doing that. And yeah, I can make money right. off my books. I can monetize that too. I can monetize the podcast. I make money off the podcast, but that's not the only reason why I'm doing it. Because if right. that was the case, then I would either look at the income levels and be like, ah, this isn't justified. Yeah. Or I'd be like, I should spend more time at work. And in reality, right. work is great. Work is amazing. I enjoy work. I don't have I don't hate my job, but I love well everything else I'm doing. And yeah. you have to keep that mental capacity. You have to take those days off. Like I've taken days off just so I can sit down and write because I'm yeah. like, I'd rather be writing this Friday than coming at coming to yeah. work. Like and there's no and, shame in that. And that's and that's lovely. Even and I'm at the place in my job at least where people know when I'm writing a book that that right. two months of me actually sitting down and putting in intense effort and time that I, that's not really going to be my best work output. Right. Like, because right. I have energy going in one place and that means energy is coming from another and I'm not right. going to sacrifice the, the book for a job that's still going to be there. Right. <laughs> like, and at the end of the day, if they have to, they replace you. Yeah. So. And they, they replace me faster than I can replace them. So it's right. like, Right. That's just what it comes down to. So I just respect that. Honestly, like I respect people's time and their efforts. And I always think like, if there's anything you can do to open up your life more, take more vacation days, take sick time when you need it, um, open your day. Like don't, don't think that you can't use the time and the time of your life um, the way you want to, because in reality, and this is what I always say, like you, there's never a time where you can't call out of work. Because if something were to happen to you, you would be calling out of work. Like if you were in the hospital that day of work, what would they do? They would have to figure it out. And that's what they will do every time. There's no, uh, man, you know, the whole company went under because you missed missed one day. You missed the weekend. Yeah, you were supposed to be there. No, we'll be fine. It's so crazy that I've called, I've called out when I didn't have sick times. Just because, you know, I don't, listen, even if y'all don't pay me today, me not getting paid is worth more than, than me sitting here and being miserable. Mm. Like, I will take that over that any day of the week. And if you, if you name, like, I won't do it consecutively, but if I need a day and I know, like, yo, I don't got it, I don't got sick time. I don't care because you know what? Y'all need me. And if you don't fire me, like, like, it, my life don't run on your time. And I think, yeah. I think a lot of people, you get caught in that because it's like the, it's like they dangle like your paycheck over your head, but then you look at it, yo, it gets so deep because then you look <laughs> at your paycheck and you're like, yo, I work, I work 80 hours in two weeks. I don't get paid a week. And I made, what? It's a, how much out of my taxes? What? And, and, then you, and then you don't even get it back in tax returns. What, what, what are we like you know what i'm saying like you just go crazy like you just want to flip stuff like so when you start to think about things like that you just like, man go ahead man take i'm taking a day off so uh, yeah i'm a, i'm gonna live my life the way i want to live it and i'm gonna enjoy the things i'm doing um i'm running i'm like doing this conference uh coming up 
And I'm thinking about like presenting on this very topic of like making space for your passions and making space for the things you enjoy because so many people, especially in my field in higher ed, they don't make space for the things that they actually enjoy. Like, yeah, they were, oh man, <laughs> I can't possibly. I'm like, you gotta answer your emails at eight o'clock at night. I'm like, Sit down, yo. Go write your book. You gotta, you got, you got all these other things you want to do. Go paint your picture. Like, why are you sitting here worried about you start, if, Jamil? If you get up there and start speaking like that, they might let you go. <laughs> yeah, 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 we'll start, yeah. we'll start exposing them. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, like, oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> you start zapping people when they leave the room, like. Yeah, men in yeah, black yeah. style like but that's yeah. what, it's just the truth like you could create so much more time and space for yourself if you allow yourself the space and time you have to say i'm going to take this vacation day i'm going to take this time off i'm gonna take this day off i'm going to do the thing i want to do and enjoy doing it and not be sad that i didn't get something done for work people be letting work follow them home and then like you said like then it makes it harder to actually enjoy the passion or enjoy the thing you actually are doing because mm -hmm. you're mad that you're tired at work the next day. Or but it's, but it's, it's, done that, it's done that way for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's not like that isn't done on purpose. It's not like, like if you think about it and you think about it from like the inception of school, like there's no reason why like as, as young children, you had to wake up at six o'clock in the morning to go to school like there's no real reason because if you're a child like if you think about it parents get out at five o'clock so you know it will make more sense to start school later mm. because by the time you get out you don't got to pay for babysitters but it's all like encompassing the same thing because if most pair if most people work and get out at five that means there's two to three four hours that you got to pay somebody to take care of your child now whether it that's babysitters or a babysitting company they all work in conjunction with each other mm -hmm. so you know like how you know it gets deep but that, that's pretty much like the schematics of like how how life has been granted to us is like it's meant for you to be on the hamster wheel and for you to like figure it out that, hey, sometimes you could jump off. Like you don't got to sprint the whole time. You're not going to get that. You're not going to get that treat that's up there by running on the wheel. You might have to jump off the cage. You know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. got to be creative in your thoughts of, of things like that. And I think a lot of times people get stuck in the cycle and, and that's okay. You can't blame people for that. But if you're a person of, of light like you are, then you just, you shed some. Yo, listen, bro, like you're saying, you need to find a way to find balance mm -hmm. in higher education because that is probably the most pivotal time for you to understand what balance is. You might need, not need to know it as much as a child or even in high school. Like, but when you start to get into a position where like it's school, it's work, passion, where's your priorities at? Mm -hmm. More likely it's towards it's towards one, one of the two things. And, and you start to see people forget about the things they loved as a child. You know, they don't do things that make them happy. Money makes them happy and money don't make nobody happy if you don't nope. have it. So, yeah. You know. And, and it's crazy. And the other, the other thing is right. The idea that you have to monetize your, your passion, right. The thing you enjoy the most that you got to focus solely on the money aspect of it is mm -hmm. also like, it's an interesting proposition, right? Because if you want it to be your business, then yes, you got to focus on what the income is or whatever, but it can't be your sole motivator if it's your business, because if it is, then your product's going to suffer. Your actual brand is going to suffer. Um, and you can do your passion. You can make money off the thing that you're doing and you can make money, do the thing and also just enjoy the act of doing it. Like if I told you tomorrow, right, you'll never make another dollar off of any music you ever made. Would you stop making music? Hell no. No, right? Because like that's not what you, you're not just solely doing music for money. And that's like the thought process that goes to people's heads. Why would I waste time doing that if I don't make any money? Why do art? Why why paint if I'm not gonna make any money off of this painting? Right. Like, is it not enough to just paint to enjoy the right. thing that you're doing, the gift right. that you got? And, um, and that's why people go, that's why like people in New York City or something like that, they'll be singing on the street. I don't think they go out there to, to, I'm sure some go out there to make a living, but I think some people go out there to genuinely let people know their passions and let them know like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm really good at singing. And guess what happens when you do that? When you don't go around shaking, yo, pay, people just come. 
here you go. Oh my God, that's amazing. Here you go. Then they'll just pay you to do to do what you love. Yeah. Like you don't have to force people to pay you. They'll pay you. They'll give you. They'll give you what they believe you're you're worth to them. Some people might pay more than others, but like if you go out with just trying to make money instantly, it's never gonna happen. And that's in any type of form of passion because you have to understand what you're doing first. And in that building phase, that might take you one year, that might take you two, or that might take you ten to figure out like, okay, this is a formula that works for me when creating art, not for monetary purposes, but just to get the best product out of it. Now I can be paid from it because this is the mm -hmm. best version of myself. Now I expect people to pay me for this yes. because it's something that I know I'm, I'm really good at. But if, you know, people have, if, but that's the thing, man, if I'm not going to work, I'm a rap. And if I'm a rap, I want to make, what I would make at a at a job mm -hmm. that don't work like that. You gotta be able to pay the check here. Like yes. it might be a hundred dollar show. You might get five hundred. You might get fifteen. You might get ten. But you gotta know, like, okay, I need to be able to accept, be water, and grab from each one of them mm -hmm. because this is something that I know I can build from. But if that's not your mentality, then you're gonna do something. You're gonna get right out of it and do the next thing. That's hot. Do more TikTok dances and think you're gonna go viral. Oh, I didn't go viral. Do the next social media. It's just gonna be a cycle for you. You yep. know what I'm saying? Which is shit corny. It's yeah, corny. do the next trend. And and it's it's so interesting because if you're not doing it for that, <laughs> if you're not doing that, if you're not doing it for your actual passion, you're just gonna start chasing because you're chasing money, you're chasing whatever right. that is. And by the time right. you get to once you get to it. It's like you might be looking completely different than what you actually want it to be. You might yeah. start looking at yourself like, oh, when did I when did I start doing this? Like when did I start liking prank right. videos? Like now I'm doing prank videos. Right. <laughs> it's like right. that's what I became. I went from yeah. doing this to pranks because pranks were people were clicking mm -hmm. on the plank, the pranks, and so now I'm doing pranks. And it's like, okay, Jamil, happened to the book. <laughs> and it and it takes so it takes so much longer to rebuild your brand mm. than it is to like um to create one like yeah like you creating one is an ever-changing process but to rebuild it from what people think it is like so people see me as a rapper right and if i tomorrow tell people that i am an actor the first thing you will think about is rapper actor you don't think he's an mm -hmm. actor you think he's a rapper who's acting not a rapper you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and that alone alone is something that people should, should take heed of when they pursue something that they they want to call theirs or they want to brand because it's like once you start something that is how people are going to see you and so you can find a way to market it different yeah and, and that's and that's hard like it's hard. i'm sure it's hard for people to see you as an author because they knew you before you were an author so mm -hmm. they might not see you as one because it takes a different type of person to accept somebody who they are now versus who you know i knew him three years ago and I, he wasn't writing books. He was just talking about writing books. So he, you know, now he started writing books and he mm -hmm. it's great that he writes, but no, he's an author now. That's how the story starts for a lot of people. That's how my story started with music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember I was at college, my first school, my Ida, and I remember I went back to visit. And over there, I was trying to be, I wasn't trying to fit in, but I just wanted people to like me. So I went back. And I was talking to some of the girls that I was friends with and they're like, oh my God, like you've changed. Like what's like, you're so much calmer. And like, I don't, I don't like this new version of you. And, and in my head, I'm like, that's crazy. I don't, I don't really remember being the person you said I was, but it's crazy that you wouldn't accept me for the person who I am now, mm. you know? So you, you think about that a lot. Well, at least I do. And, and you just, you're cognizant about how you portray your brand to the world because it could change. And when it does, not everybody accepts it, you know? So yeah, that's it's, everybody trying to do TikToks and shit. Yeah. Stuff. It's like <laughs> you, you start doing stuff, not recognize, not realizing that that's going to be, that's going to follow you and right. rebranding yourself and trying to change from what you were. That is a whole process. Like you can't, you can't expect that the world is going to all follow you. Just like you said, now you're a rapper actor. It's like, all right, like you're a basketball player. How do you become, how do you drop the basketball logo, label to becoming something else? It's right. like a lot of people have a trouble doing that because yeah. 
it follows you that piece of that piece continues to follow you and when you finally do get away from that then you have to deal with and contend with all the people who knew you as something else mm -hmm. and they're always going to know you as that so mm -hmm. it's like the the base changes at some point at some point people start to come in who only know you as what you currently are um right. and that's why it's important to be consistent with who you are because i could become the tiktok dancer and Next thing you know, what do you think? Like, you think, oh, Jamil got the TikTok dance thing? Like, that's what he does. He makes the right. new trends. He right. snips the video. And next thing you know, he does that. That's Jamil. It's like, it's like, yeah, that could be me. But why would I, like, do I want that to be me? Like, no, because how do you go from TikTok dance dude to author again? Like, no. it's, uh, no. it doesn't, no. it, it won't. And, and you know what's crazy is that, like, we've seen, we we've been around long enough to see how trends um, how trends in social media platforms dissipate. Like think about Vine, right? Mm -hmm. and you think about the people who are very popular on Vine. Some of them maybe not as popular. Think about when YouTube was like the main source of like video content and people were doing like short comedic things that they do on TikTok now. They're doing it on YouTube. Think about how many of those people didn't translate over into that world. Like Mm -hmm. Think about the people on like the company Yik Yak, where it was like an anonymous texting service and, you know, people felt like they can say whatever they wanted and do whatever they wanted. That doesn't convert over to like, well, you have to put your face here now. We have to see who you are. So it's like a lot of things, man, it's, it's, it's very, it's, it, it's everything happened before. That's how I feel. Everything happened before. Every, we've seen everything. Everything is a big cycle and a big, like the world revolves and so does life. Like it's all the same thing, man. We, we just, we have to do what is meant for us instead of trying to follow what we think is going to get us popularity or money because none of that matters. It might not even be a dollar bill by the end of 2030. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. who knows? Who knows? Just got, you have to focus on, you got to focus on being you, being authentic um and just continue to do the things you enjoy and yeah. when those things become part of your identity or whatever identifiers uh like author or podcaster that's cool um and do those things and continue to do those things as much as you enjoy them because it's not about necessarily making everyone else feel like oh he's the biggest podcaster in the country oh jamil's podcast is rivaling joe rogan like Nah, like it's not, <laughs> it ain't, it ain't doing that. And, it, and if it did, that'd be cool too, but I'd still just be podcasting. I'd still just be kicking it. Um, right. And I think that's the piece that doesn't change is like, whether I make a ton of money off of this or a little bit, it doesn't change the fact that I still want to do it week to week right. and I still want episodes coming out every Thursday. Like that's just how it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's dope. And it's dope too. And it's dope. Yeah. And yeah. then, and then, yeah, being able to build something and actually enjoying that. Like I've been watching the process of building and staying consistent and seeing like seeing this page grow and seeing different people uh, tap in and interact. And now I have a lot of people who I can connect with who I know are real people like on the other end who are actually interested in the stuff I'm doing. That's the piece that makes it worth it for me every time, because I know there are legit humans on the other side people I've interviewed, talked to that I didn't know that are now a part of this network who, who are mad dope in most cases. So it's just like, yeah. it's cool to see. It's cool to get hit up by agents because I get hit up by agents from folks now who are like, oh, this person, can they have, can they hop on the podcast? And I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And setting those up and being a part of that, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's all part of it, but it just, uh, it's, it's staying consistent. It's enjoying this. And it's recognizing that I'm doing this because I want to, not because I'm trying to be famous. Because everyone wants to be famous for some reason. Because it's because they think fame and they think like fame and money are here. <laughs> but like, you know, fame is like here and like <laughs> money you make from being famous is like here. You gotta know how to do it right. But a lot of people can't see through that, man. It's a lot of smoke and mirrors that people believe mm. is real. And and that's just that's honestly what it comes down to, bro. Like, like you said, like staying true, doing what you love, and and the, the chips will fall, and they will continue to fall. But they might not be fast, it might not be at the speed you like. But as long as you believe, it will happen for you. Because you can't do something for so long and not have a taste of what your life could be with it. Like, mm -hmm. you might not get the full taste, 
but she, like you already said, pe- agents and like that, like think about that on a bigger scale, like a, a big agency of uh, an all time famous, all time great author is getting in contact with you. You now know how somewhat, how to handle that situation if it does come to you from somebody who might be a little bit bigger status because you've had those experiences at a smaller taste Mm. because you kept working at something when you started with no agents getting in contact with you you actually having to reach out to people and to people's agents to see if they wanted to be a part of Mm. it so like you don't do something for so long and don't get a taste of it like I do music I've gotten a taste of what tour like looks like I've gotten a taste of what having a lot of fans looks like I got a taste of it all so it's like now you got to figure out how to make it the consistent diet Mm. But until mm. then, it's okay because you're still growing and you're working towards that purpose, whatever, you know, that and whatever your end goal is. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's dope. It's yeah. dope. Yo, so I definitely want to thank you for your time. Where can people connect with you online? Where can they listen to your music? Where can they follow you and see what's up? Everybody can follow me at Trey Tuck, T-R-E-Y underscore T-U-C-K underscore you can find me on all streaming platforms under Trey Tuck. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter. I also make clothing. This is my hat. It's Workaholics. Um, you can go to workaholics.com to get you your own merchandise. We have hats, hoodies, shorts, uh, spandex for women. We have bags. Uh, we also have gift cards and a few other things that I can't think of off the top of the dome. But Workaholics, growing a community. It's all I do. Um, w e r k o h o l i c s dot com. Hey, and everything will be linked in the in the show notes, so you can always click on that too. <laughs> <laughs> Did you spell it out for no reason? <laughs> it's a lot of spelling, man. Uh, but thank you so much, yo. This has been dope. I'm glad we were able to connect uh, yeah. and appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, bro. Thank you for having me. Scribble notes. Scribble notes. Scribble notes. Uh. Scribble notes when I wrote these quotes. If I offend, pardon me, there's more of me to grow. Creative in my process, enjoy the show. The will is different when you recognize the different strokes. Different folks, same goals, we all want the most. So when we reach the top, we can enjoy the toast. The type of bread we get is fresh about the bakery. Told them don't play with me. With or without a degree, don't question my intensity. Bravery, similar to agencies that want to see you fold. So just pray for me and pray for me. I ain't starting with my